Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Olds and you're watching Behind the Bot. It's a fun show where we look into FTC robots, their designs and what makes them work. And I'm here with team number 10355, Project Peacock from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, this team has done several league meets this year, including uh, some fantastic performances. Uh, looking at their past performances as well, too, they won a design award at State and also taken a Think Award as well. And today I'm here with both Jameson and Alex, and we're going to be looking more into the robot here, including uh, some of their mechanical features, what they're doing with TensorFlow, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. fun. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Uh, so Jameson, you're going to be taking us through a lot of the mechanical features on this robot. So we'll start with the journey of the ring through the robot. So tell me a little bit more, uh, starting with your intake on your bot. Yeah, so our intake starts folded up. Uh, this is the starting configuration of our robot. We fit within 18 by 18 by 18, of course. Uh, so at the beginning of the match, uh, teleop period, we'll deploy our intake here. The rings come off of the floor and get sucked into the back. Uh, we can hold up to three rings at a time. So once they've come through, they end up in our transfer mechanism back here, which is uh, a little scoop of sorts that lifts the rings up into the back of the shooter. Uh, once they're lifted up, we have a servo with an arm in the bottom that flicks them out one at a time into the shooter. Uh, we can shoot a ring now to demonstrate that. And then once we've shot all three of our rings, we can uh, do the cycle again. So let's take a let's break this down a little bit more, starting with your intake uh, for what you have. So something interesting I've been seeing amongst teams there's, there tends to be kind of this fifty fifty split on drop down intakes. Uh, some are passive, where literally they just drop down and not move, and they can't bring it back up the rest of the match. Uh, yours, it looks like it's able to bring back up. Uh, first off, what are you using for motors uh, on your intake? And then uh, can you maybe talk about more of the decision to have an intake that is able to drop down and up during a match? So uh, we're running a 435 RPM motor on our intake. It's geared down two to one. Uh, there's only one motor running our intake and our indexer. So uh, there's a series of belts here. There's one main drive shaft that drives everything. Uh, we have belts going out to the front intake. The reason we chose to have a powered deployable intake is we found that it was easier to pick up the rings if they had something pushing them into the floor. And having them pushed into the floor and pulled in at the same time seemed to be the best option. So we've stuck with that. Uh, the reason we have it fold up is just for safety. We don't want to break anything. Uh, once they've gotten past this initial lip here, uh, there's a series of double belts that carry them back to the back of the robot. Um, so can we talk a little bit more then in regards to your transfer mechanism, um, kind of how that staging uh, works between that. So the rings come in, and then is there a second stage that essentially lifts them uh, up into the shooter? Is that how it works? Yes. So uh, at the back of the robot, we have a half cylinder. So all three of the rings come in and stack up. They fall on top of each other. Uh, it can only hold three rings, which helps us prevent controlling incidents. So once we've picked them all up, there's a servo that tilts the whole mechanism up, which that turns on our shooter as well. Uh, and then at the back here, there's also a servo with an arm that shoots them one at a time into the shooter, which then throws them into the goal. Um, so looking at your shooter on here, so can you talk to me a little bit more about your trials and the compression that you've used uh, for that? So do you know what your compression is right now? And then, you know, of course, with wheels that are, are going to be a little bit more squishy, uh, there sometimes tends to be a little more var variability in shots sometimes. So I'd love to hear more about uh, some of the things you've tried, what's worked, what hasn't worked, uh, and especially with uh, having two wheels as well. So at the beginning of the season, we were running uh, BaneBot's compliant wheels, which were very high compression. We had less than five inches between the outer uh, diameter of the wheel and 
the wall on the side. Sure. And it seemed to work pretty well, other than the fact that the rings would vary wildly in their left to right uh, destination. So we decided to do some trials with rhino wheels, which seemed to work better. Uh, but then after that, we tried Gek wheels, the Google Builder Gek mm-hmm. wheels. So uh, right now we're running two of those. Right now, uh, as you can see, the motors are off. There's no compression at all. Uh, when the motors turn on, we're spinning up to uh, somewhere right around uh, 3,500 RPM, I think, uh, which expands the wheels considerably. So uh, we don't have any data on exact compression ratio, but uh, if the motors are off, there's zero compression. Yeah. So no, that makes a, that makes a lot of sense on that. Um, so as we continue on this robot here, uh, next thing we're going to be looking at is your wobble goal mechanism. Uh, curious to see more uh, about uh, what's worked for that. Uh, and tell us about some of the design process that went into it. So our wobble mechanism is a six-inch arm that's turned by two servos on the robot side. So we deploy this arm, and then we have uh, opposing grabbers as such that grip the pipe part of the wobble goal. And then the whole thing tilts up and lets us drive to the wall. This little ramp here is an intentional design feature. This prevents the end from getting stuck on the lip of the wall, which is a problem that we had. Uh, so you can see there's a little support here. Mm-hmm. Let me put that back down. Uh, if we let go of the wobble, this little channel right here prevents the goal from tilting side to side, which was a problem that we had. Uh, the arms now have a straight shot out after uh, half of their arc, because one of the problems that we had was the wobble goal would get stuck. We couldn't let go of it because the arms wrapped around it. So it would create a problem here if the arm continues around the radius of the pipe. Um, so now we have it just drop out like that. And then we can fold everything back up and go and get the other wobble go. How much uh, area for air do you have in that in that grabbing uh, there? Because it looks like you have to be pretty precise from my perspective, but I, I could be mistaken on that. So, like, where can you kind of show where the wobble go could be and how it picks it up? So uh, there's about four and a half inches uh, between the inside of each of these uh, pincers here. So we could have the wobble go come in over here or all the way over here. Usually we have the driver try to shoot right for the middle but uh if we close it from over here okay it always brings it back to the center there no that's actually that's better than i i thought to be honest with you of how that would be so mm-hmm. looks like you get uh maybe give your driver a little bit more assistance night you can always expect the driver to be precise but it's nice to help them out sometimes too so, yes yeah <laughs> for sure uh so we're gonna be moving on to uh alex who's gonna be talking uh more about uh some of the programming uh, electrical features and any other sensors maybe that weren't mentioned uh, on your robot so excited to hear about what you guys are doing for that right so just for general sensors we have the um webcam up here that we use for TensorFlow. We have a button right here, which will show how we use it later for initializing the autonomous period. And then you can't see any right now, but we do also have encoders on the wheels. Sure. And are your, are your encoders, are the, is that primarily just used for autonomous or do you use it for anything during teleop? Uh, it's just more for slight corrections. If we notice any of the uh, motors not driving as they should during teleop. We do use field centric drive though, uh, which is really uh, on the encoders, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, how about some uh, programming things that you're doing on your robot? I know uh, you're going to show off something uh, that's on your phone as well, too. I'd love to take a look at that. All right. So, uh, whenever we do autonomous programs in person, uh, instead of having multiple programs, we just um, do, uh, or we are able to tell our robot what it does during each program. So whenever we press that button there, it'll move the arm up and it'll get the rest of the initiation started. Um, So then uh, back over on the phone, we can uh, press buttons to decide which alliance we're on. We can press if um, if we're closer to the field or the wall whenever we start. So um, wall side. And then power shot or high goal. uh, And then retrieve the rings and the 
that are in the center of the field or not. And then, um, oh, red, red elf bumper. And then um, if we want to get the second wobble goal or not. And then we press A or B if we decide uh, if we want to do either of those. Well, it makes a lot of sense. You guys have a fantastic looking machine. We appreciate you taking the time. Once again, we have 10355 Project Peacock from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Guys, thanks for taking the time. Uh, tell us more about your robot. Uh, good luck if you have any other meets coming up. But otherwise, looking forward to big things from you uh, in future seasons as well. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content.